Good afternoon, church. Uh, is the microphone on? Yeah. Hello, mic test. Okay. Good afternoon. I have some announcements for everybody today. Um, on this uh, 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time, or weekend. Uh, first of all, um, oh, um, we have um, we w- we would have we would have we would we would have to invite people to consider if there's anybody that might be interested to join our preschool program. We happen to have some openings uh, in several several of the year levels, particularly the four-year-olds. If you are interested, um, please uh, please contact Janae Pinkerton at our preschool program um, and. Uh, and let the children have a wonderful experience. They are, uh, they have started a while back, but uh, there's still opportunity to catch up for our children if you would like to join our preschool program. Um, sorry? How about the choir? Want to join the choir? You want, you want me to announce that too, Ed? That's this Tuesday, 7.30. Okay. <laughs> All right, Ed, okay, I will announce it now. <laughs> so you heard Ed, if you would like to join in the choir, would like to start up the choir of our parish again, um, given the opportunity to do a little bit more choral pieces now. And uh, there's still a little bit of COVID restriction, but not much. So we are able now to um, resume chor- our choral services here at church. So uh, please uh, come to a rehearsal on Tuesdays, Ed. Edward Novak. Is it Tuesday at 6 p.m.? Oh, it was Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. We'll try to make a better announcement for that one later on. Um, also, um, we are also anticipating the, uh, the masses for uh, our beloved dead here at Mary Queen, which we do every year. Um, and uh, as we always do, we invite everyone to uh, submit a picture or a memento of your beloved dead that will be arranged on uh, some altar tables here in the sanctuary, which will stay here for pretty much the month of November, a um, couple of months in November, a couple of weeks in November. So uh, if you would like to have your family's uh, beloved departed pictures in the sanctuary, uh, we would like to ask you to m- make sure to have them as soon as possible uh, so that uh, they will be here in church when uh, they start to arrange uh, the uh, sanctuary for the weekend the day of the dead uh which is november 2nd and that i think that's a tuesday or a wednesday so uh, as always we will be doing a memorial mass for that particular day as well um there uh there is a um, a very special event happening here at mary queen on october 29th um it's a celebration uh sponsored by the support group for filipino seminarians um which is a the uh registered ministry of the Filipino Ministry of the Diocese of Joliet. This uh, event is a concert of priests. There will be about 20-something priests coming to Mary Queen of Heaven um, to celebrate vocation. There will be some prayers. There will be some um, witness talks on vocation. There will be some, um, um, some prayers. Uh, pertaining to vocation, prayers in general, um, but also um, songs mostly by the priests, um, including yours truly. We will be doing some uh, some concert pieces, not classical, but uh, many of these are all basically religious songs and inspirational songs. Um, included in the is included in the group would be uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Father Joel um, Lopez. He is. Uh, a singing priest in the Diocese of Rockford, Illinois. We will have some priests from the Archdiocese of Chicago. Um, Father Mario Quejadas from the, from the Joliet Diocese will also be there to lead in the prayers. Um, we will be uh, having some choral pieces here among the priests, but there will also be three Filipina uh, musicians, singers, that will be also joining us for that particular evening. This is all in support of the ministry of the support group for Filipino seminarians that foster the seminarians that come from the Philippines to study here in the United States to become priests of the United States. Over the years, we have been able to sponsor uh, seminarians and foster seminarians. 25 of them have become priests all over the United States already since 1980, 1990, 
1999. So um, uh, it, we will have that event here at Mary Queen of Heaven. Um, and uh, I happen to be the spiritual director of the uh, support group for Filipino seminarians, so we're hosting that event. Um, the tickets for general admission is $25. So uh, if you are interested, please let me know after Mass. Uh, again, this is a concert of Filipino priests. It's called Pagtitipon. Most of the songs are in English, so there's no problem. <laughs> Most of the songs are in English, and uh, Pagtitipon means the gathering, uh, especially during, after all the COVID stuff that we've been doing, it's kind of nice to gather uh, in one voice. Also, part of it is the celebration of the 500 years of uh, Christianity in the Philippines. So there's a lot of reasons to celebrate. And so if you're interested, please uh, let me know after Mass, okay? Thank you. The entrance hymn, number 668, Lord, whose love in humble service, three verses, 668. We gather together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon, church. Let us turn to one another and wave at each other. Good afternoon, and welcome to church. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Acknowledging that we need God in our lives uh, because we are always uh, able to only do good whenever we do it in the name of the Lord and through the Holy Spirit. Let us now seek the Lord's mercy and forgiveness for the times when we did not bear fruit and did not do good because we are away from the heart of God. Let us pause for forgiveness for all our sins and seek Him to come to, to our nearness and renew us and grant us the zeal for our faith.
Jesus, Lord, Savior, and Redeemer, Lord, have mercy. Jesus, bread of life, splendor of the Father, cup of salvation, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, King, friend, companion in our journey, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, the Father. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Amen, amen, amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours, and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Psalm 1056, 1056. Six, five. Oh. 
Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O oh Lord, be upon us, who have bought our hope in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us. As we place our trust in you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark.
James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink or be baptized in the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant of James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, Whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, church. Anybody who can remember last week's homily, last, last week's gospel, which I wasn't here because I was in Chicago for the wedding of Sarah Kowalski, our parishioner. Um, what was last week's gospel? Anybody? It was, there, was a, there was somebody who talked to Jesus. Who was that? Somebody talked to Jesus last week. Anybody? The rich guy. The rich man with many possessions. Very good. You are listening. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the rich man with many possessions was talking to Jesus last week. And, and uh, what happened? The, the rich man was, uh, asked Jesus, how do I get to heaven? Right? He had, he had the right question. And then Jesus told him um, the, the commandments. Right? And then the, the, young, the, the, man, the rich man said, but I've done all that. Then what else did Jesus say after that then? Huh? Sell all your possessions and then give, give to the poor and follow me. Very good. So then when that happens, you'll have the kingdom of heaven. Did the man follow what happened to the man? Was he happy? No. He grew what? Sad. It was very sad. And he, he, he did not follow Jesus. Why? Because he had many possessions. Right? Many possessions. Jesus was challenging this young this, this disciple to go beyond the basic, simple expectations. Yes, uh, the minimal. What is the minimal? Do not do what is not bad, what is not good. That's the minimal. And now is Jesus challenging him to follow and to give his life and to release all his possessions so that he can be free to follow Jesus. And he couldn't do it. And Jesus looked upon him and loved him. Right? That was the key word last week. He loved him and, and was compassionate toward him in this. Like Jesus today in the gospel reading is not talking to a disciple. He's talking to someone, some, to two instead of one. 
and these two are closer to him than the rich man. Because these two are, who are they? James and John. James and John are the children, the, the boys of Zebedee, their father. What is the, uh, what is the, um, okay, it's like going to school now, right? Okay, so who are the friends of James and John? Huh? The disciples? There are two others who are very close to them. Who are they? Andrew and? And Peter, very good. <laughs> Andrew and Peter, why? Why were they close? They were all what? They were all partners in what? In fishing. Good. They were fishing partners. They were all fishermen. Right? They were very close to each other. Very good. You all Catholics know your Bibles, eh? This, this is basic stuff, right? Basic stuff on the, on the, on the apostles. Now, the, the two approached Jesus. James and John approached Jesus. Um, James and John are special because they were among the first that were called. They're called the proto-apostles, right? They're the four ones that were called first, James, John, but also Andrew and Peter, right? They were all called by the Sea of Galilee. And uh, they followed Jesus. They abandoned and followed Jesus as apostles. So they were not just disciples, right? There's so many disciples, but there were only 12 apostles that Jesus chose, correct? Right? So this is the inner circle, the apostles, the 12 apostles. And of course, being so close to Jesus, they had an expectation. I mean, Jesus was gaining popularity. You know, in the, in the language of today's modern world, the, he is gaining a lot of followers, right? He's gaining a lot of followers. TikTok, YouTube, Facebook likes, Instagram followers. He's got a lot of it galore, right? So they could see that he's becoming a celebrity. They're seeing that something is happening to Jesus. They, people love him. People like him. Why? Because he did all these miracles. He spoke with authority. So naturally, James and John saw, I think we were hitting, he hit a jackpot here. We followed someone who's going to be rising above, going headed towards some amazing status, right? On the upward swing, right? What did they project? What did they project? What did they think Jesus was going to become? Very good, Judy. <laughs> they thought that Jesus was going to be the king of Israel. He will be the liberator. Who else thought this? Peter thought this, right? Remember? Peter said, oh, that won't happen to you, Jesus. Because he thought he's going to be the king. Dying is not in your, in your platform because you're going to be a king. Peter said this. So what, 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 was, what was James and John asking at this point in this particular gospel? James and John were trying to be ahead of their friends. Huh? James and John probably thought, hey, John, did you notice that you are the beloved? Because he is the beloved, right? We know him today, even today, as the beloved disciple. John, you're the beloved disciple. Hey, you have advantage over the others. Let's go to Jesus and talk to him and make us the right hand and the left hand when he becomes the king. This is what's going on, church. Right? They're, they're doing politics. They're doing politics in the midst of the call to serve, call to be, to, to be part of the kingdom of God. They're doing the politics. All right. So they, they, they had... Church, how did they begin to talk, about, to, talk to Jesus? What did they say? Jesus... I'd like you to do this for us, right? That's the language. How, how, the, how many of you talk to God that way? Hey, uh, God, can you do this for me? Hey, listen, I want you to do this for me. How many of us begin our prayers that way? Ever, anybody? Uh, I, 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 I have to admit that sometimes I, I do that. Right? God, can you just do this for now? I need you to do this for me. That is exactly what James and John is doing. That is a formula for disaster. Because we sometimes think that we know what's good for us, and usually we don't. 
Right? But James and John had an ambition. They wanted to be on the right hand and the left hand of Jesus. Now, Jesus responds. I mean, he responded very nicely to them. I would have banished them, right? I would have banished them. If I were Jesus and they're giving me a different, a different sort of a agenda, they're giving me a different agenda, I would have said, you guys go slap, slap, poof, back and forth two, for the two of them. You guys don't know what you're talking about. Go away. I don't need you. But Jesus was nice. What did he say? Well, um, are you ready to drink the cup that I am to drink? Did they know what they answered? Well, they said yes. Yeah, we're ready to drink the cup. They thought they were going to drink from the golden cup. Toasting with Jesus in the kingdom, in, the, in, his, in his reign as a king. Yeah, I'm ready to toast you in the kingdom. No, that's not it. He's drinking the cup of salvation. This, 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 this cup of suffering is what he is about to embark on, the journey toward his cross. Did they know what they were saying yes to? Did you think? No. They had no idea. On top of that, they, the other apostles, the rest, of the, the rest of the 12, the 10, as according to the gospel, now here's what they're talking about with Jesus. I'm sure one way or the other this happens, right? Oh, now they're, they're trying to do that. And the 10, how did the gospel say this? The 10 heard this and they became indignant with James and John. Why were they indignant? It wasn't because they just, they just thought, thought that was so out of line what they said. Because they also knew, all of them really presumed that this, is, this guy is going to be king of Israel. So they were like, ah, they were able to ask before us. They all had the same issue. All of them had the same issue. I don't think they all got anything anyway related to the cross. And Jesus would say this three times before he arrives to, to, in Jerusalem. He would say this three times before he gets there to the place where he would be crucified and would be given away um, to save the world, right? And so Jesus now would call them and give them the proper teaching. And the proper teaching is simple. The apostles, the people who are supposed to have been called to follow the Lord Jesus and to be part of his team, are there not to be served, but to serve. They are there not to be the first, but to be the slave of all. They are there for a different reason. They are being called for a different reason. It's not the call of the world that they are called for. It's, for the, it's the call of heaven that they have responded to. And it's a very different calling altogether. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of opportunity, church, to talk to young people. Um, and uh, in my conversations with a lot of young people, I always ask them, so what would you like to be when you grow up? What are, you, what are your plans? What are you planning to become when you grow up? And they always answer something like, I'd like to be a baseball prayer player, superstar. I want to be the next LeBron James. This is the language of... I'd like to become popular. I'd like to earn a lot of money. I'd like to become a doctor. Why do you want to become a doctor? So that I can have a lot of money. And then when you have a lot of money, then I can buy a house. And then when you get to buy a house, what then? Then I can live a happy life. And then when you live to have a happy life, then what then? I don't know. How about you die? Sometimes, in, in, I, I don't know if this is only true to young people, but I think everybody, one way or the other, has a dream of what it is that you like to do with your life, right? Sometimes we don't stop dreaming. We, uh, 
Uh, what is this song from the journey? Don't stop believing. You, you believe in something all the way to your death. Right? You have to have some dream. And sometimes our dreams are short-term dreams. There's dreams that are long-term. Either way, we have a dream. We have an idea what we want to do. And I don't know about many of you, but sometimes our dreams are motivated by short, narrow goals. To be happy, I'd like to have a house. We don't think beyond too much. We don't think in terms of heaven, in terms of all that the true and lasting happiness. Or we don't even think about legacy. What can I do to make the world that I live in better for others, for the people around me, and for the generation that follows? We don't even think about legacy. We're just thinking sometimes so short-sighted short in terms of, oh, what can I do for me now, here? What's good for me here now that I want? And so, and so it, it, it is a temptation that we all have as, as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ or not for all of us. We tend to live our lives thinking in very short, insignificant goals and dreams. And Jesus is telling us, no, 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 no. If you are a Christian, you don't think in those short-term goals. The shortest term, the shortest goal that you can have is the goal that you have for yourself. That's the shortest goal. It is for you and you alone and yourself. You see how narrow that world is? When your world and your dreams are all about you? And do you know how miserable that dream will lead you to? It will lead you to the deepest of your miseries. Because if there's one formula to misery, that is selfishness. And so when we're only thinking about terms of what we can get, what, how we can we have more money, how can we have a comfortable life, how can we have this and that, that's not going to take, take you too far. I've seen a lot of people who live empty lives because all their years they've wasted too much time trying to get this for themselves in this small little world that they have. The Lord is asking us today to open up and break the shell of our own ego, of our own selfishness, and reach out as far away into the universe as we can. How? By looking for ways that we can serve. Serve others. Live for others. Die for others. Die for God. Live a meaningful life by leaving a legacy of a ripple effect of your kindness, your generosity, your faithfulness, your, 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 your love, and your, and your hope that transcends the boundaries of time and space. That is what the Lord is saying here. If you want to follow the Son of Man, you have to live exactly like Him, to be a servant and to give up your life, your own self, for the sake of all. And in whatever way we do that, my dear church, in whatever way we do that, that is also the pathway to a life-giving, fulfilled, happy, and meaningful life. Here is a clue to this. You know, my, my, uh, me, I just had a convocation with my fellow priests a few, a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, right? We were there together for four days. And we had, there was a study that was, that was conducted about the priests of the Diocese of Joliet. And 70% responded. We were asked the question, are you happy and fulfilled? And do you feel like you have a meaningful life? You know how, how, what is the percentage of the positive answer? 98%. 98% of your priests would tell you that they have a happy, that they have a meaningful, and they have a blessed life. I'm included in that number. And we don't have pretty much anything. Most, most of the time in a church, we are the least paid. For all the education that we have, for all the uh, uh, number of hours of work that we have, we're always on call. For all the sacrifices, happy sacrifices that we make, including having, not having children or not, 
no, you know what we don't have. <laughs> we are still counted among, among the happiest in the world. I wonder if those great doctors and basketball superstars actually feel the same. I'm curious. So take the clue from that, my dear friends. Jesus is very clear about this. If that is what you want, if you want a happy, meaningful life, if you want heaven, you'll have church to break away from your selfishness. And so instead of asking, what do you wish me to do for you? Or what, do this for us, whatever we ask you, say, Jesus, what do you want me to do for you? Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Aware of our need of God, let us now come to Him with our petitions and intentions to seek His will always in our lives. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we embrace both the dying and the rising in our daily lives and grow into a fuller sharing of new life in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all government leaders will defend religious freedom, that is, discipleship in Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are caught in human trafficking, that God will free them, heal their wounds, and restore them to their loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children with special needs, their parents and families, that they will be given all the love and support they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and for all who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Albert Fuchsian, the intention of this Mass, for the intentions listed in our book of petitions and bulletin, and for the prayers we now speak in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, listen to our prayers. We give you thanks for the many ways that you bless us. Compel us to follow you and to lead our lives in Christ. We ask all this in his name, for he is Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please sing 661, the servant song, 661. Four verses.
God bless you both and thank you for this happiness and grace. For the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Will Thanks, you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant and to We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the Lord. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your Pray now, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. In the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink 
this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, a bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. United as one family in Christ, we now pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Now for each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word that my soul shall be healed.
Number 816, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart. Number 816. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and heed his voice. So when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. With joyful lips we sing to you our praise and gratitude that you should count us worthy, Lord, to share this heavenly food. You Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Is not the cup we bless and share the Christ out poured, do not one cup or loaf declare our oneness in the Lord. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us all. Saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. The mystery of your presence, Lord, no mortal tongue can tell, whom all the world cannot contain, comes in our hearts to dwell. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. You give yourself to us, O Lord, then say, to serve each other in your name in truth and charity you satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat come give to us saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Let us pray.
Grant, O Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, please, uh, Doria, uh, make sure to also uh, read through the bulletin this weekend. We have some uh, uh, words regarding um, uh, our legacy uh, for our parish, uh, for those of you who are thinking about legacy here for Mary, Queen of Heaven, uh, so we can continue our mission. Um, please also watch the, the, the coming soon. We will be doing a, a parish, a state of the parish report, financial and everything else about our parish. So uh, please watch out for that coming up within this month before we end the month of October. Um, thank you also for those who have been part of our Ministry of Healing last night at our healing mass, our first healing mass. And given everything else, I thought it was very successful as far as uh, people coming for healing and the prayers that were said yesterday. Uh, I thought it was a powerful experience for so many, including our prayer team and myself as well. So um, let's continue to pray for our parishioners and our family members who are uh, experiencing any mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual sickness and uh, troubles during this time. The Lord be with you. Spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Amen. Thanks be to God. Number 664, go make a difference. 664. Two verses. Make a difference, we can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference, we can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. To let the people see the love of God in you and me. We are the light of the world, not to be hidden but to see. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. We are the hands of Christ reaching out to those in need the face of god for all to see we are the spirit of hope we are the voice of the peace go make a difference in the world go make a difference we can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world.